Today I'm going to take these old world Tuscan style candlesticks along with, the, with a few other vintage items that my client literally left on my doorstep just like this. We are going to take them from this to this and I'm going to show you exactly how I did it. All right, who does not have candlesticks that are shaped like this, but that are Tuscan brown, old world brown. I'm gonna be updating these to a black and white McKenzie child look. Um, I've already got them primed in a white primer and I am using Dixie Belle's chalk fluff, a little bit of spray water and my flat medium brush. And I'm gonna give these a nice coat. You can see I've already started here with fluff, which is a nice soft white versus a hard white. I really like that color. So let's get started. We got some work to do. These guys are big. This is such an easy process and an easy update. Um, these have a lot of carvings in them. So I just use my brush here and I use a pouncing technique to get inside there. I did do a spray primer on these instead of a brush primer, just because it was a lot easier just to take these out in the yard and sprayed them down. I just used a, a, a primer from the hardware store. And now you can see the difference in the color right here. Instead of the hard white, I am coating these with a coat of Dixie Belle's fluff. And then I'll be doing some black work on them with, uh, I haven't decided if I'm gonna use Dixie Belle's chalk mineral paint caviar, or I'm, go I'm gonna do them in I probably am gonna put a coat of silk on these, which is Dixie Belle's All in Wood One paint. And if that's the case, I'll be using a coat of salt wash over this, which is the silk white. It means it's got a built-in top coat. So when I'm done, I'm done. I don't have to come back and put a top coat over this. And then I probably will use their black, which is Anchor. And one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. I have four of these big boys to do. Should be a lot of fun though, because I get to follow all of the built-in stripes and shapes that are already on here. I don't have to do anything on my own except where I want to add like checks and stripes to this little area right here, like this right here. I can see stripes going in this direction. I can see checks running along this middle line right here. So should be a lot of fun. So I do want to mention that on these candlesticks as well as the other home decor items. I actually used a spray, a white spray primer. I usually use Boss Gray. Um, both of these work beautifully. However, if you are going to paint a home decor item, a lot of the items that you might want to update have a really slick surface. And if that's the case, you want to use a product made by Dixie Bell called Slick Stick. I did not use that on any of these projects. These all had um, a rather rough surface to them and it just really didn't require that. But if you've got something that's really shiny or slick, I've, I've even painted my mixer. You could uh, find that in my YouTube videos. Uh, anything that's glass, metal, formica, tile that you want to update. Three down, one to go, but look at this one. This is a big boy. Oh goodness. Did you know that when I work on these detail pieces like the McKenzie Child's knockoffs, the detail takes a really, really long time, especially on these big pieces. But the smaller the detail, the more time it takes. So as a furniture painter, what I do know is I could paint an armoire in a basic color, like a big armoire in a basic color with maybe a dark wax, maybe a little bit of blending. Um, I could paint a giant big armoire and the same amount of time that I will spend on these four candlesticks. Isn't that crazy? Crazy, right? That's the difference between painting big things or painting small things with, with a lot of detail. Or how about the big things with a lot of detail? Those take forever. So now that we have our base coat on our candlesticks or whatever items that you're working on um, completed, now it's time to add detail. And for some whatever reason, I did not film myself 
when I was drawing the design on the candlesticks. But I did film myself while I was drawing the same patterns on some of the other home decor items. So um, as you can see here, I'm drawing vertical lines from top to bottom and I'm using a Sharpie marker. And I don't use tape. Um, I don't draw in pencil first on these small areas. I just choose my design and I just go for it. I stabilize my hand and very slowly I move the marker from the top to the bottom in the vertical direction. Once my stripes are evenly spaced out and completed, I then sort of shift the item that I'm working on just so that my hand is really comfortable because now I'm gonna draw the horizontal lines and I don't draw one line from the left to the right. I break it up into small dashes just from point to point. Um, you can see me do a dash and then I'll do the next one and the next one. Um, it's much easier to do it this way than it is to make your hand go all the way from left to right. So once I have the entire little checkerboard laid out, it's time to start filling that in with paint. And you can see now that I'm using a very small detail brush to begin filling this in. There, you have several options here when you're filling in these small checks or stripes. You can use a tiny detail brush, you can use a tiny angled brush, you can even use an oil-based paint marker as well if that's something that you're more comfortable with. So you would use exactly the same process that you've watched me do here on the candlesticks as well. Um, and you can also watch another YouTube video of mine. I did a salt and pepper shaker set inspired by Mackenzie Childs. And I explain in great, great detail how to do checks and stripes on circular items like the candlesticks. So um, I will li link that below in the description and you can go over and watch that one as well. All right, so now that we've got all of our stripes drawn and our patterns drawn with the Sharpie marker, it's time to begin filling in with paint. I'm using um, silk paint here in Anchor, and I'm using about a quarter to half inch wide flat brush. I just dip my paint, and you wanna stabilize your hand as best as you possibly can, and just place it in one spot and drag it down with a nice sharp edge. It's really difficult to tape on a curved surface or a rounded surface, and this is both curved and rounded. So this is just something that you wanna practice over and over. Maybe if you wanna try practicing it on a flat surface first, just draw out some stripes and, and paint them. Um, practice definitely helps. Um, I'm not gonna say practice makes perfect, but it definitely helps. And once you see that you have got the edge down, you can go ahead and take it to a curved surface. Now I've moved on down to the center rim. Again, this takes a steady hand, get in a good, comfortable position. It's, it really helps if you hold your breath <laughs> and move slowly, move slowly. Get comfortable, move slow, hold your breath, and make your strokes uh, smooth and long. Raise your hand away from the project as little as possible. Look how nice that looks from bottom to top. These candlesticks are huge. Once I finished all of the pieces, I gave them a top coat for protection and Dixie Belle gloss for that gorgeous Mackenzie Childs sheen. Would you look at that? Every single candlestick is completely unique. Not one is like the other, however, they look like they belong. We've got the mirror frames, the wall decor. Thank you, Mackenzie Childs, for your daily inspiration. I love these so much. I cannot wait to see them in my client's home. It's just such a, such a happy, happy vibe. They look fresh and updated. I do hope that you will subscribe to my channel here, Tracy's Fancy. We have a new YouTube video that comes out every single Sunday. Um, we bring you as much inspiration as we possibly can. We love black and white. We love Mackenzie Child, but we offer so much more than that on a weekly basis. Um, we look forward to having you around.